Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've had a wonderful week uh, this week. Well, with the young people, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then Friday, we got all our people together. And Saturday, where are the men? Did you get something? Let your wives know that you get so they got something. Because now we're men of distinction in Jesus' name. And uh, you sisters, I believe that when we come over the, um, uh, this period in September for women of distinction, I know that you are going to invite other people. At that this place or whichever place, I don't know which place we're going to use yet. I don't think it, it Ball Road will continue. I don't even think this place will, con will continue. But we'll see what you do. But when you come this uh, September, make sure you really come. And uh, you men, take care of the babies and the children at home. And release our sisters. Because it's going to be a wonderful time. But you know, this morning, all I came to do is just to pronounce the blessing of God upon you. And so I'll be reading from the Bible, Apostolic Benediction for God's People. Amen. Shall we write, raise up our hands as we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. I thank you for the good things, the great things that are happening here in this deep and high Bible church in London and also all over the UK. Lord, we're praying this very day you turn every life around. Amen. Bless the men and bless the women. Bless our parents and bless our children. We pray, O oh Lord, everyone in here today will be blessed of the Lord. That everything that needs to be shaken out of our lives, you shake them out in Jesus' name. You empower this body of Christ that will reach out, Lord, and they will know we are significant in the kingdom of God. And I pray that the blessings that are flowing already will never stop flowing. Bless your people today, Lord. Everything they have been praying for, today is a day of fulfillment. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless every one of you. You can sit down. As I announced to you already, this morning we're just bringing all our program of days, week and weekend. We're bringing everything to a conclusion. And I'm talking to you very briefly, and then we're going to pray after that apostolic benediction on God's people. In the Old Testament, the Lord made the leaders, the priests, to pronounce blessing and benediction upon the people of God. And in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit inspired the apostles to pronounce benediction and blessing upon the people of God. And here is our time. The Lord has given us the old and the new, like the left hand and the right hand, like the two eyes, like the two feet, the two parts of the Bible coming together and uniting together to say that you are a child of blessing. And the blessing of God in your life, if you have not seen it before, you're going to see an overflow of the blessings of God. Apostolic benediction for God's people. In Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 22. Numbers chapter 6, verse 22. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, on this wise, that means in this way, that means in this manner, that means after this pattern, ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee, and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. As the Lord pronounces a blessing upon us at this time, 
There are three things we're going to consider. Number one, apostolic prayers for God's people. Apostolic prayers for God's people. Number two, abundant provision for God's people. Number three, angelic protection for God's people. When you have those three things, the prayers, the provision, and the protection, you have all you could ever demand from the Lord. Number one, apostolic prayers for God's people. By the way, when we say God's people, who are these God's people? Because if we didn't know who the people of God are, then we'll not be able to know who are the people that have the right to claim, to receive, to enjoy these apostolic blessings or prayers. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 26. Deuteronomy chapter 26 from verse 16. This day the Lord has commanded thee to do these statutes and judgments and thou shalt therefore keep and do them with all thine heart and with all thy soul. There are some people on earth that have given themselves to the Lord. We have given ourselves to the Lord through the Lord Jesus Christ. And because we have given ourselves to the Lord, we have said, Oh God, we belong to you, soul, spirit, and body. Those are the people of God. In verse 17, Thou hast avouched the Lord that this day to be thy God and to walk in his ways and to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and to hearken unto his voice. Who are the people of God? The people of God are the people that have come to the Lord voluntarily without anybody forcing them and without anybody pushing them. And they have said, Oh Lord, we belong to you. In two ways. Number one, by creation. Number two, by redemption. Because you created us, you have the right to own us. Number two, because you have redeemed us and you sent Jesus Christ to be our redeemer. Because of that, you have the right to have total possession of us. And it says, you have avouched yourself. You have dedicated yourself. You have surrendered yourself. You have made a decision that you belong to the Lord. Then it says in verse 18, The Lord has avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people. The Lord said, He's keeping record about you now. Because you have surrendered yourself to the Lord, the Lord says, I've accepted you. I have received you. And then he says, I've dedicated myself to just follow you through life and take care of you. You are the peculiar people of God. As he has promised thee that thou shouldest keep all his commandments and to make thee high above all the nations which he has made. The Lord will make you high above in praise, in name, and in honor, and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he has spoken. God has spoken good things concerning you. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 9 and 10, And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day thou art become the people of the Lord thy God. This day you have become the people of the Lord your God. The moment you say, Lord, I receive you, I accept you, I turn away from my sin, and I turn unto you. That moment the Lord says he has accepted you. And there is no maybe or perhaps or but about it. He says, you belong to me, I belong to you. Thou shalt therefore obey him. The voice of the Lord thy God, and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. In First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. Now that we have given ourselves to the Lord, we are referred to as the children of God. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which has called you, as the Lord called you, I said, as the Lord called you, have you responded to that call of God? Well, thank God if you have. Then he said, as he which has called you, so, so be ye holy. In all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I 
am holy. Now that we become the people of God, Christ is praying for us. Jesus is praying for you. In John chapter 17, John chapter 17, verse 9, I pray for them. What a great encouragement. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And then he tells us in verse 11, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come unto thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. The Lord is saying, is praying for us. And what prayer is he praying for us? What benediction is he pronouncing upon us that we will be one? And thank God we are one. He tells us in verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. He will keep us from evil. In verse 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That's the prayer Jesus prayed for his people, that the Lord will sanctify us. In verse 20, neither pray I for these alone, but for them which thou shalt work for them, which shall believe on me through their word. That means he didn't only pray for those early disciples, he has also prayed for every one of us. And I pray that his prayer for you and for me, for us together, will be fulfilled and accomplished, finalized in Jesus' name. In Titus chapter 2, verse 14, we're following through on who are these people of God. The people of God are those who are saved. They are the people who have given their lives to the Lord. They have made a decision. They belong to the Lord, and those are the people of God, and those are the people upon whom the apostolic blessings of benediction is coming. In Titus chapter 2, verse 14, it says that he gave who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works, that means then, as we belong to the Lord, now we're zealous not of evil anymore. We're zealous not in committing crime anymore. We're zealous of good works. These are the people of God. Well, then, if these are the people of God, what's the blessing, apostolic blessing, upon these people who are saved? Upon these people who are separated unto the Lord. Upon these people who have tasted of the glory and the grace of God, the goodness of God, through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's come back to that Numbers chapter 6. Numbers chapter 6 and see the blessing that he pronounces upon you. The blessing that he pronounces upon me. And the blessing he pronounces upon every family. He says from Numbers chapter 6. Reading from verse 22, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If the Lord didn't want to give something like this, he wouldn't have pronounced it upon the people of God. Neither would he have sent Moses to say, Go and tell the children of God, the children of Israel, this. On this wise, in this way, in this manner, according to this pattern, he shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, the Lord bless thee. Every time when you wake up in the morning, remember, you are blessed already. Yeah. Causes will clear out of your way. Yeah. Calamities will clear out of your way. Yeah. The Almighty God said from heaven that the people of God said, The Lord bless thee. Let me ask you a question. What if Moses went there and Moses forgot himself? And instead of saying, The Lord bless bless thee, what if Moses cursed them? It will not be fulfilled. Because, you see, he was sent to bless. And sometimes, you know, we're very much afraid, especially those of us who have been in white garment uh, churches before. And then, as you come out of white, that white garment church, and you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, then your people send you from home. They say, prophet so and so, it's really rainy curse upon you. And the whole church, that white garment church, they are praying and fasting because of you. And they are saying that it will not be well with you. And then you become afraid and you are panicking. That curse cannot be fulfilled. 
Because the Lord has sent the ministers, the apostles, the prophets, and the leaders of the church, he said, don't curse my people, go and bless my people. If any of us, whether myself or any other person, if we came to you and, and then and we forget ourselves, and you know sometimes some church leaders get angry, and in their anger they will say, you are cursed, I am your pastor, I am your leader, and I'm telling that you are cursed. My friend, that thing will not take any effect. Because the Lord sent Moses, he sent the people, he sent these people, he said, go and serve them. He said, go and bless them. He gave us blessing to give unto you. Therefore, you are not afraid because so and so, I hear so and so is cursing me. I hear so and so is a rainy curses upon me. And he's getting some people together and they are fasting and praying. And they said that I, it will not be well with me. And they are saying that, you know, uh, I, when I was, I was one that prayed for you and you got that child. Now that you are not listening to me, that child will die. That child cannot die. Because it was not the man that gave the miracle, it was the Almighty God. And the Almighty God said, go and bless my people. And thank God we have come to bless you. And you are blessed. And the blessing of the Lord cannot be reversed in your life in Jesus' name. It says, the Lord bless thee. Number two, the Lord keep thee. Everywhere you, everywhere you go, here is the benediction. The Lord says, he will keep you. He will keep you from all harm. It will keep you from all danger. It will keep you from all the plan and the conspiracy of Satan and the demons. Number then, then in verse 25, the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. All you will get will be the smile of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord. And everywhere you go, you will see that hand of the Lord upon your life. And then it says in that same verse 25, and be gracious unto you. Everywhere you go, if you go to the right, it will be the grace of God. If you go to the left, it will be the grace of God. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. You are going to have peace of mind and peace in your family. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. What does that mean? You shall put my name upon the children of Israel. I'm wondering what that means. You see what it means. Is this in those olden days, whenever people owned a dog, human beings, they owned a dog, they'll put something on the neck and then they'll hang the name, especially if that dog belonged to a king. And then they hang that name there. They say this dog belongs to a uh, president so and so, king so and so, governor so and so. And then that dog will go anywhere. As the dog is going anywhere, and then the fellow says, why do you come to my premises? And they want to take a whip and whip that dog. Then they look at the label on it. Uh, they say it belongs to the king. And they leave that dog alone. They say, hey, get, get out of here. And then they'll not be able to do anything to that dog. If it's a goat, the same thing. If it's a sheep, the same thing. And now, as the children of Israel, they were passing through. They will pass through the land of the Moabites. They will pass through the land of the Canaanites. And as they were passing through, if these people wanted to hurt them, God said, Moses, put my name on them. As they raise up their hand, they'll see my name on them. They will drop that hand. They will not be able to do anything. And the name of the Lord is upon you. When witches see you, they say, this one we cannot touch this one. And when all the evil pass, when they see you, they will not be able to touch you because the name of the Lord is upon you. You are protected. And that is the benediction that comes upon the people of God. I come to point number two. Abundant provision for God's people. Abundant provision for God's people. We're going to do something. We're going to pick up uh, just one book, one, one epistle in the New Testament. And this epistle is the epistle to the Ephesians. The epistle to the Ephesians. And what we're going to do is, uh, there's a lot in this epistle. But I'm going to pick a verse from chapter 1, a, a verse from chapter 2, a verse from chapter 3, a verse from chapter 4. I'll pick two from chapter 5, and then I'll pick one from chapter 6. I'm going to give you seven of them. And then you will see the abundant provision that we have for the people of God. Are we ready now? Ephesians chapter 1, we're looking at verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. 
It says, blessed be God. As God is blessing us with you, we are blessing the name of the Lord. We say, I'm happy to be a Christian. I'm happy to belong to God. I bless the name of the Lord because he belongs to me and I belong to him. There is no sorrow. You know some people, they don't understand the Christian life. They say, you know, I'm a Christian. What a pity I'm a Christian. Sometimes in the valley and sometimes on the mountaintop. And it is not an easy road. The burden I'm carrying. Then they will cry a little. I am not alone. I am not alone. This burden is too heavy for me. Ah. We have gone over that kind of stage. Switch are thy promises. I will never forget you. I will never forget you. It says because of the promise of God now, I'm blessing the name of the Lord. How can you be crying because you are a child of a king? You know, your child went to school and then came and said, Mommy, I got something as a surprise today. You know, the, the, the child of uh, the prime minister, he was crying. And then I went to him. I said, hey, my classmate, why are you crying? And the fellow was crying and said, eh, I'm crying because I'm the son of the prime minister. Ah, if you are not trying to be the son of the prime minister, come on, let's change position. I want to be his son. Why are you crying because you're a child of God? Why are you sorrowful because you're a child of God? Bless the name of the Lord because he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Number one, we have provision. Provision. That's in that verse I've read to you now. Abundant provision. We have all ground provision. We have all sufficient provision because it says he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Chapter 2, now verse 6. Chapter 2, verse 6. And has raised us up and made us to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Have you ever noticed this verse of scripture? Many, many years ago when I was just a, a new Christian, and then I was involved with, uh, you know, these young people, the scripture union. We used to have what we call night vigil. And then in the night vigil, uh, somebody will be leading the prayer. And they'll say, pray, pray very well. Nobody must sleep. If anybody is sleeping, you stand up and you walk out because we must not sleep. He says, you know why? Then he said, because Daniel, he was praying one day. And then the powers of the air, they were there. And he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And then his prayer will not go because all those those uh, kings of Persia and those evil spirits, they were there. Because Daniel was here, the evil past were there, God was on, on top. Have you ever heard that before? And therefore they said, you pray and pray and pray and pray very well. And then if you are getting tired, you walk here, you walk there, you jump, you be there, you do exercise, do everything. Yeah, I don't know how to do it because I don't do that. So they said, do it very well. Then your, your prayers will pierce, you know, the, the, the dark cloud. And then, you know, I followed them a few, a few weeks, and then I said, how is it that we're still in, like Daniel in the old covenant? How is it now we're in the new covenant? Then I read this verse, and it says, he has raised us up together, and he has made us to, to do what? To see it together in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. Now, you need to change the order today. Now Christ is at the throne of God, and he has raised us up. And now we're seated together in the heavenly places. When we pray, the evil spirits are not above us, like in the case of Daniel. The priests of Persia, or the priests of Nigeria, or the priests of Ghana, they are not above us, like in the case of Daniel. Now we are above. How many of you know that when you're on the mountain top and you're fighting some people in the valley, everything you throw down is knocking their head? And that is where I'm sitting in heavenly places with Christ. Number two, that is the position. Number one is the provision. Number two is the provision. You see the, you see the position that we have. Number two, that's the position. We're now on top. And because we're on top, we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. A sentence that to breathe out unto God, a sentence that to shout out unto God is answered already. That's why we're not struggling, because we are seated. 
We are relaxing now. We are refreshed now because we're seated together in heavenly places with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes uh, uh, they, they want us to battle. It reminds me, I was uh, going out of the office. Maybe you had a story before. If you've had it before, listen again. I want to hear it myself again. You know, I was uh, sitting there in the car, and he brought uh, this bellow. He was demon-possessed, and four men really held him. And they were, you know, when he did like this, all those four men will fall down. They said, Pastor, Pastor, please, come down and pray for, you know, pray for this, our brother, because it real, real terrible problem. Then I went down the glass. I sat down, because we were seated together where? In heavenly places with uh, Christ Jesus. I said, what's the problem there? And then they told me about it. I said, all right, uh, close your eyes. I said, in the name of Jesus, I don't stand up for, de for the devil. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. for Jesus. When you are casting out devils and then you are adjusting your belt, what's wrong with you? And then you remove your coat and they say, what do you want to do? I want to fight the devil. But Jesus said, it is finished on the cross of Calvary. After he has finished everything, why are you tightening your belt? Why are you removing your coat? Sit down. Praise the Lord. And so I, you know, I sat down there. I said, Satan, in the name of Jesus, get out of that place. I said, in Jesus' name, amen. You know, the people were still holding the man. I said, let him loose. And then they let him loose. I said, what's your name? He told me. I said, who is that? He told me. I said, how about that? He told me. How about that? How about that? I said, don't make trouble anymore. That was the end of the problem. Because we are seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I transfer that authority to you. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 20. Here we're not looking at the possibilities. Number one, we saw the provision. Number two, we saw the position. Number three, now we're looking at the possibilities. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now, unto him that is able, our God is is able. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told Nebuchadnezzar, our God is able. And Caleb told the rest of the children of Israel, God is able, we are able. And Paul the apostle told the Philippians, God is able to raise up, uh, to raise up a body, a dead body. And John the Baptist told the children of Israel, God is able to raise up stones to become children unto Abraham. God is able. And when you pray this morning, and when you pray any other time, the God you are praying to is a God who is able. In this verse 20, it says, Now, unto him that is able to do, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek, according to the power that worketh where? There is a power working in us, and it is the power that gives us divine ability. If you look at this verse, number one, God is able to do what we ask. Number two, God is able to do what we think. Number three, God is able to do all that we ask. Number four, God is able to do above all that we ask or think. Number five, God is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think and then number six god is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh inside us if we have all that number one we have the provision Number two, we have the position seated in heavenly places with Christ. Number three, we have the possibilities. I believe that even this morning, all things are possible. In chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. Chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. And he gives some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers for what? I said, for what? Again? For the perfecting of the saints. Not for the destruction of the saints. And you know, sometimes uh, some people wonder how some of us will relax. Because sometimes you see, there are people that threaten. I remember I was talking to uh, one of my professors. Because uh, we, we, he wanted us, all, of, all of us students, and we were very small. Mathematics class, we're always small. You're always small. We're just about 12. And then he wanted us to come and do something in his house. Just near to the final exam. 
and uh, that's at the university. And then eventually, as you know, everybody he said, How many of you will come? And you'll do this thing. They all raised up their hands, and I didn't raise up my hand. And then he looked at me and mentioned and said, Was didn't you raise your hand? I said, No, sir. He said, Will you not come? I said, No, sir, I'm not coming. He said, Why not? I said, Because that thing is not Christian. He said, Chris, because he loved traditional occultic things. And he was real, real professor, great professor. And he said, what, Christian? He said, what kind of Christian? I said, I'll talk about it. Then I began to talk about being born again. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. And he died for you and he died for me. And since I received Jesus Christ, I don't do any of those things anymore. Oh, he said, this Christian kind of Christianity will be wiped out in Nigeria. I said, sir, it's impossible. You cannot do it. Because, you see, it's for the perfecting of the saints. Nobody can destroy the church. I said nobody can destroy the church. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, if you put anything in the mouth, if you put in the leg, you put in, you do anything you do, I'll just be looking at you like this because I know this church will be perfected. Because it gave some, you know, somebody, you don't recognize my power. I am an apostle. I will destroy this church. I said, God does not send apostles to destroy the church. He has given us apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfection of the saints. There's only one thing you can do is to perfect the saints. And if you're not in the business of perfecting the saints, the Lord will get you out of the way. Because the church is going to be perfected. Number one is provision. Number two is position. Number three, possibilities. Number four, perfection. You are going to be perfected. And it is through the ministry of the apostles and through the ministry of the prophets and through the ministry of the evangelists and the pastors and the teachers, we are going to be perfected. We come to chapter 5, verse 25. Chapter 5, verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That is purity. Everybody say purity. purity. You know, the Lord, by the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb, he cleanses us, he washes us, he purges us, he makes us holy, and he purifies us. And then in chapter 5 of Bastati, Bastati chapter 5, it says in Bastati, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. That is partnership. You know where they say we're members of his body. And because we're members of his body, we have partnership with him. If all this belongs to us, why should we ever be sorrowful? If everything like this belongs to us, why should we ever take a back seat and say, I have nothing, I can do nothing, I can amount to nothing. Today, you are somebody. Yeah. And you have a great position in the sight of the Lord. Number one, the provision. Number two, the position. Number three, the possibilities. Number four, the perfection. Number five, the purity. Number six, the partnership. And then number seven, the power. In Ephesians chapter six, Ephesians chapter six. I'm reading from verse 10. Ephesians chapter six, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. You will be strong. Amen. You are not weak anymore. With everything the Lord has given you in his word, now you can say, let the weak say, I am strong. And let the sick say, I am well. You are healed in Jesus' name. Number one, apostolic prayers for God's people. Number two, abundant provision for God's people. Number three, angelic protection for God's people. You have the protection of angels. And those angels, they never fail. When God sends them to do anything, they do it just immediately. In Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in thy way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. You are going to get to that place the Lord has prepared for you. In verse 25, and you shall serve the Lord your God. Do I have people here that want to serve the Lord? 
all the days of your life and you will not go away from the lord he says while you serve the lord your god he will bless your bread he will bless your water and i will take sickness away from the midst of thee there shall nothing cast their young i said there, there shall nothing cast their young I don't know how many of you have known about some of these great men of God of the past. There's one man of God, his name is John G. Lake. Actually, John G. Lake, they had a lot of sicknesses in their families. And, uh, you know, uh, one of his sisters had died of terrible sickness. And then another sister had died of terrible sickness. And John G. Lake at that time was just, you know, an evangelical Christian. And then when the other people come, they'll comfort them and say, well, you know, God works in mysterious ways. His ways are past finding out. And John G. Lake will say, well, who can question God? And they thought it was God that killed uh, those uh, two sisters. Then eventually the wife of John G. Lake became sick. And that was very dear to John G. Lake. And then one day, while the wife was very, very sick, and then about to die, and these other miserable comforters, Job called them. And they were coming, they said, you know, God works in mysterious ways. He said, not on my wife. This one, this one will not die. This, this one will live. And then he now, he now looked at the word of God. He said, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. I went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of, of the devil. Ah, it's not God that killed my two sisters. It's our ignorance. It's our not having faith. This one will not die. And then eventually went, uh, you know, to a man of God, John Dewey, that knew how to pray. And they prayed, and the wife came alive. And then they said, John G. Lake then said, now that I know the truth, in my family, no more sickness. And that man canceled sickness, the sickness that had been rampaging and killing everybody in the family from that time that he knew the truth. He said, no more. And today we say, no more. We say no more to the devil, no more to sickness, and all the things that have been troubling to mention us from this day, no more. And then, and it was fulfilled. Here the Lord is telling us in verse 26, there shall nothing cast their young. Miscarriages, we cancel miscarriages. We cancel sicknesses. And then he say, not be barren, we shall not be barren. This church now will not be having funeral, funeral, we'll be having wedding. We'll be having child ceremony. The goodness of the Lord will come upon us in multiplied ways. And then it says, the number of thy days I will fulfill. You will not die young. It tells us we have angelic protection. It tells us in Psalm 91. In Psalm 91, it's telling us from verse 1. Psalm 91, reading from verse 1. It tells us from verse 1, it says... He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Secret place. Look up here for a, mo for a moment. Uh, have you ever kept anything in the secret place? I said, have you ever kept anything in the secret place? You know, you know your boy, you know your daughter. My daughter, will, he'll be, he's, he's too nosy. He'll be looking at this and this, and then when I come back, he'll say, Daddy, Mommy, I saw something. I've taken out of it. This one, I'm going to keep it in a secret place. So that anybody searching this one, they will not find. And when the devil is searching for you, they will not find you. When the demons are searching for you, they will not find you. Because you are dwelling in the secret place of the most high. Uh, you know, you know it's, God is wonderful. I said, God is wonderful. You know, I hear a lot of testimonies, and some of the testimonies actually, you know, concern me. And I never talk about them because to me now it's just a normal, natural thing. I was uh, preaching somewhere, and one of these people that wanted, they said they can do evil. Maybe they can do evil outside there, not inside here. And so, they, you know, he said that they wanted me to forget what I was preaching. They wanted me to just, you know, uh, to be absent-minded. And then when I became absent, then to fall down. And then eventually, they, you know, while they were coming, as they were coming from a distance, then they saw a wall of fire around me. You know, you may not see it around you, but it's around you as well. Then I was in another place, and while I was preaching this, you know what? When I make the altar call, then they come forward, they come running forward, and then they fall down, then they begin to roll on the ground, and then they begin to confess. This is what we came to do. You cannot do that in this place. 
So uh, this fellow was uh, coming, and then he had an instrument in his hand. And I was turning, I was preaching, enjoying myself, reading the Bible, opening from Genesis to Revelation. And the fellow was turning something, and eventually when I said, now, give your life to Christ, he forgot the mirror in his hand that was susie to turn, he raised up his hand, and everything, all the mirror broke into pieces. Because we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. And then today, I bring you now to that secret place. Yeah. And that is where you will dwell. Every evil power against your life, they are canceled in Jesus' name. And then it says, He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence, He shall cover thee with His feathers. And under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. Not for the arrow that flies by day, not for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, not for the destruction that wasteth at noonday, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. When I come next, I will still see you. You will be going stronger and stronger. You say, Pastor, what if I become sick and I'm not able to come next time? No, you are going to come. Yeah. You will not be sick. Yeah. Only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. A thousand falling here, ten thousand falling here. Did you ever read the news? And they said, you know, many people are dying. Are you not afraid? Are you not going to go for your immunization? And you saw how many people are there. They said, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You say, keep on counting. There's no, 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 no. If it's only nine, no problem. Why? I'm waiting till a thousand will fall. And I will still be standing. After that one thousand, they said, Pastor, the epidemic is now, it's rampaging everywhere. And the city is becoming very serious. They say now, they have counted 1,500. Oh, I say, they still need to count 10,000 plus 1,000. How many? 11,000. And before 11,000, you wake up, you, you know, brush your teeth and sing Amazing Grace. I swear the sound. I will never forget you. I will never forsake you. The promises of God are yes and amen for you. They will not touch you. Because now the people of God were secured. The protection of God is upon us. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast said, thou, thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. What a minute. He shall give his angels charge over thee. In the case of a Peter, Peter was in the prison. And then Herod was thinking, tomorrow I'm going to deal with that man. I'm going to kill that man. And uh, Peter just relaxed because the whole church was praying for him. And then the angel came. Only one angel said, get up. And he got up. And then as he came to the iron door, that time there wasn't automatic door at that time. Only for Peter. You know, every time that anybody wanted to go out at that time, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, the Lord sometimes, he, he, he thinks about 2,000 years ahead of time. And then he gives miracles to his own children. What the scientists are going to invent, 2,000 years to come, he does it for his own children. It's only, it's only in this century, these automatic doors come, you know, that uh, you want to enter now, and the thing will open of its own accord. Did you hear about that 100 years ago? Did you hear about that 200 years ago? Only in the case of Peter, what they were going to invent by science, 2,000... You see, some of the diseases that they say they don't have medicine for now, and they're going to discover the medicine, a hundred years to come, we get the cure already here. We get the miracle already here. Because God thinks ahead for his own people as the angel led him. And they were going like this. You know, angel became his partner. And then as they were walking, the door opened. And then the next one, the iron door opened. And then as they came out, angel said bye-bye. And angel was gone. And then Peter said, 
wonderful. Look at this deliverance. And then he knocked on doors, and it was the door of the house of John Mark where they were praying. And Rhoda came to the door. And when she heard the voice of Peter, she was so full of joy, you know, a young daughter, and then went back and said, God has answered that prayer. And that uh, Peter is up. They said, you are mad. Those people were praying. They didn't expect Peter will come up so soon. God answers your prayer before you even expect the answer will come. Yeah. And while you're saying, let us pray more, let us fast more, why are we praying more? Why are we fasting more? Look at the answer at the door. Yeah. And then, when the when the owner kept saying, is he, is he, our prayer has been answered. Then they opened the door, and lo and behold, here is Peter. But my, my point is, Peter had only one angel and had a great miracle. And look at what we have read in verse 11. How many, is that one angel in verse 11? Plural. If you need 10, God will send 10. If you need 20, God will send 20. You are so precious in the sight of the Lord, he said, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up. In their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the, and the dragon shall thou trample where? Under your feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With Tell me out loud. You know, you know some people that said, my mommy died at the age of 34. And my daddy died at the age of 37. And I am 32 and a half now. I don't know what is going to happen. Why are you thinking like that? With long life. Well, I satisfy thee, and I will show you my salvation. What a wonderful thing we have. Number one is uh, apostolic prayer. Number two is abundant provision. Number three uh, is angelic protection. And we have all the three together in the same package today. And the Lord has blessed us, and we are blessed, and nobody can reverse the blessing. The Lord has spoken good concerning you. And the Lord has blessed you. And this blessing the Lord has given will remain permanent in Jesus' name. In Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23, in verse 19, God is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. As he said, I shall he not do it. As he spoken, I shall he not make it good. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Your blessing, nobody can reverse it. You have apostolic benediction upon your life and upon your family. All those good, good things the Lord has promised you. This very year, this very time, they are coming to pass. Just, just open up and say, Lord, I thank you. I bless your name. I glorify you. The days of blessings have come. And the days of rejoicing have come upon us. You have apostolic benediction apostolic blessing and the goodness of God is upon you if we are people of God you have turned away from sin and you have come to know the Lord as your personal Savior what a glorious thing you have today what a glorious privilege you have today it is well with you it is well with you and it is well with your family it is well with everything you touch in your place of work it is well as you move about, it is well. In every circumstance of your life, it is well. Don't worry about enemies. Don't worry about demons. Don't worry about Satan. They are under your feet. The Lord has pronounced goodness concerning your life. You will not die. You will live. You will serve the Lord. And as you keep on serving the Lord, the blessings of God will keep on multiplying, multiplying, multiplying in your life. You are blessed, nobody can reverse it. You are blessed, nobody can reverse it. Accept it. Receive it. Move about as a child of a king. The Lord is your God. This creator, redeemer, is your father. He created you in him view. And it's never, never, it's never going to leave you in the hands of the enemy. Those blessings are sure. 
Those blessings are sure. And those blessings are confirmed upon your life. <coughs> so it is a promise. I will never leave you. Nothing can molest or turn my soul away. Even though the path be dark in the valley, beyond the shining, the light of a glorious day. They will not forsake you or leave you. In his sign, they will hold you. In his arm, he will fold you. Do not forget your leave thee. He's your redeemer. He will care for you. Rest in the bosom of the Lord. Relax in the presence of the Lord. No more worry. No more anxiety. No more fear. No more panic. Live as a real child of God. The grace of God is available for you. What a great provision. What a great position. What great possibilities and potentials. And what glorious perfection. What radiant purity. And satisfactory partnership. Our great, glorious power it brings upon your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Why don't you raise up your hand for your mighty blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we know we are blessed already. Our children are blessed. Our sisters are blessed. Our brothers are blessed. Everyone, Lord, here, we are blessed in Jesus' name. You have given us more than we can ever request for. And we know that there is no Balaam that can reverse the blessing of God. And there is no demon or Satan that can reverse the blessing of God. Oh, Lord, I pray that every negative thing in the life, in the family, even in the environment of my brothers and sisters here, I clear everything away in Jesus' name. But all those lies of the devil, all the deception of the devil, all the threats of the devil, oh Lord, we come against every sin, oh Lord, and we pray that you wipe everything away in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone here today and those who are staying outside and those who are in the other hall, I pray everyone one by one, you touch them miraculously. And you turn things around in their lives, so Lord. All the good, good things they have been asking you, they are reaching them down, they have spoken them out, and they have been saying, Oh Lord, oh Lord, when? Oh Lord, when? I'm saying, Oh Lord, this is the very time of the abundance of blessings in their lives in Jesus' name. And the victory to live a joyful life, a happy life, a holy life, and a sinless life, oh Lord. I pray you grant unto them in Jesus' name. That now everywhere we go, we know that we are the children of the King. Your name is upon us. Your power is within us. Your blessing is in our families. And Lord, we pray, we'll experience new miracle every day. New power every day. New supply every day. And the manner you are giving us from heaven will never stop, will never cease in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just pray that this will be a new day. This will be a new time. A new era for this church, Deep and I Bible Church, in the whole of UK, in Jesus' name. Your blessings will flow from this place to other places. And everyone here, oh Lord, I pray, they will have enough. They will have abundance. And they will have enough to be able to give to their neighbors in Jesus' name. We pray that when they pray, you will answer. Even when they are, when they are sleeping, miracles will be going on. And I pray, Lord, they walk, they meet miracle. Signs and wonders will follow everyone here. And when our pastors, our ministers, our workers, our choir, and the ushers, everybody, when they minister to us, Lord, I pray, your hand will be mighty upon us. And we pray that we'll now, as we wake up to this revival, nothing will happen, Lord, to quench or to put out this fire of revival. 
Lord, people back in Nigeria will hear that you have blessed your people here. And we will be a channel of blessing to the world around us in Jesus' name. Lord, this apostolic benediction will stay and stick with your people. We will see the evidence of it. Confirm it in every life, O oh Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Don't sit down yet, but you can put your hands together and clap for Jesus. Amen. I told our young people in Blackpool, uh, you know, we had a conference with the young people. They are those young people. You know, even though they are young, they didn't know how to clap. And I had to teach them how to clap. Let me teach you. You know, many years ago, when I was a young Christian, and, you know, they said something, and we clapped. You know, I just clapped like this. And then somebody then came out and said, he said, you know what? When I clap, I see that, you know, that devil is chasing me and turning around. He's still in front of me like this. And then his two ears are in front of me. And then they said, we shall clap. And I put my hands together until the devil said, I'm deaf now. Let me go. Put your hands together. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now. God bless you. You know, since I've been, since I've been coming, every time we finish, somebody will say, now nah, we'll rise up and we'll say the grace, and then, I, and then you say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. And sometimes I wonder, why are these people, they cut down the five blessings in front, and they only claim the last. The Lord is your shepherd. Yeah. You will not lack. Yeah. He makes you to lie down in green pastures. Yeah. He's leading you beside the still waters. Yeah. He has restored your soul. He will be leading you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. Because Emmanuel is with you. His rod and his staff will comfort you. And he will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He has anointed your head. Your cup is running over. Surely. 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 Goodness and mercy will follow you. All the days of your life. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's keep clapping, let's keep clapping.